Are you so happy I'm back? I'm glad to be back too. Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today Duff Dog and I are gonna see if we can't get a 1992 Chevrolet Silverado back on the road. Is this thing even a Silverado? So anyway, we picked this thing up down in Okehoma, just a few blocks up the street from Puddin's. Uh, couldn't come back empty, so I left my Datsun down there, kept the engine, it's in the back of the pickup. And couldn't find anything on the Facebook Marketplace, so I just went old school and just drove around town, started knocking on doors. First door I knocked on, they didn't know if they wanted to get rid of it, this thing had some weeds growing up around it. A couple hours later, they called me back because I said, hey, you gotta call me tonight because I'm leaving in the morning, and uh, made a deal on this thing. So here it is, I believe it's a 92 or 93 either way short box regular cab you just don't find them up here and then everything up here cab corners are gone i got a video on replacing those and they're rusty over the rear wheels and you don't just don't find many two-wheel drives up here and if they are they're long boxes so i had to bring this thing back we gotta get all our junk unloaded and carry on with our lives oh i just noticed that dent there i really haven't looked this thing over put it in i got back late picked it up that night in the dark so it wasn't much footage so we didn't really get to do a walk around and I guess the story is they had this thing running like three months ago, but you know how that goes. It might be easy, it might suck. Let's get this thing wheeled in the shop. Are you not happy I'm back? I wonder how this thing's gonna roll with a flat tire over here. Gonna find out. It ain't gonna roll. I guess we'll be putting air in that tire. Well, what is this? That looks like tranny fluid. What do you think, Duff? Give her a sniff. Good view up here, huh? Yeah, we got some stuff to work on. We did come up with a matching tailgate for the tow pig, though. First thing we got to address, because of the noise, so that I can shoot a video, is this valve stem. And uh, I like my stuff to roll, so. We're gonna go ahead and dismount that, and put a new valve stem on it, and carry on with our lives. What do you think about that? Gonna pee on that, watch it bubble a bit. Oh, you're tired yet today. Me too. So I sprayed a little of uh, Keith Benoit's Croil on the wheel studs. I notice the exhaust got a nice big pinhole in it. And I'm guessing uh, the inlet of the muffler is busted out. So we're probably gonna have to see boom tube for that. I also noticed the plumber's tape that it's mounted from. Oklahoma things. You guys know what's up down there. But you can also see that red dirt all caked down to the muffler so you can tell she's a southern rig. But there's even paint in spots. Well, I thought there was some paint there, but I don't really look like it sometimes there's paint on the frames like there's a little paint on that bump stop there which if i get my way this thing's getting a flip kit and uh that might go away we'll see see if it runs first like shocks got paint on them that's stuff you just don't see up here i'm not well versed in the 88 to 98s but i mean what's that like a two and a half three inch exhaust that's that's some girthy stuff there maybe it's aftermarket i don't know let's get this wheel on So that that tire ain't hissing at us like a snake over in the corner. I'm a slathery little snake a snake. Let's uh, get a better look at this thing. So I can tell that the paint's super, super oxidized. So maybe we'll address that if we can get it running. It's pretty baked up top here. 
There's not much bringing that back. Looks like she had the vent shades on it. So we could clean that up a little bit or put new ones on. It is a Silverado. Chevy Silverados are made out of thunderstorms. Bruce Lee movies and big It's got a toolbox. What do we got in here? We got the windshield shade thinger mobopper. I don't know, it keeps your dash from cracking out. Too late. This one's uh, all cracked up. Got some coolant, about empty. Uh, battery insulator. Ooh, some Craftsman sockets. Some Delco spark plugs. Five to four pin trailer socket. A da Ooh, look, 30 cents worth of dollar. New set of plug wires. Spare belt. Empty jug. Blue butt splices. Wiper blade, brake pads. Oh no, power steering fluid. So I'm guessing that's what our leak is. Oh no, Lucas power steering stop leak. Yeah, that never fixes anything. What do you got here? What are you? Come on, fingers. I don't even know what that is. Some type of sensor of sorts. Maybe that's what they were gonna put in it because they didn't think it was gonna run. Oil filter. Ain't all full of trash, at least. I'll check out the other side when we get over there. Looks like the shocks are either shot. Oh no, just the mount broke. Just got a new stud in there. Oh, that side's missing though. It's got the kind of not so desirable bigger chrome mirrors. The uh, sport mirrors are a little bit better, right, Duff? Well, Duff, you ain't seen this thing yet. Go ahead, check her out. Power locks, power windows, automatic tilt, CD player. You did say, yeah, you're probably gonna want to address the speaker situation. So I guess that's that. There's some more speakers down there. I'd tip the seat ahead, but you're in there. Look at all them third smoked darts. Nothing but the finest. What's it got for a gear ratio? I used to remember how to read these, but I don't anymore. Wasn't it, didn't it start with a G? GU4, I think that's your gear ratio. But yeah, this is basically where all your codes are at, you know, for your trim packages, like 117.5, that's your wheelbase, and tell you your engine, transmission, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, AC, all that good stuff. Remember when the cup holder, has anybody ever used these cup holders? I think my 64 wagon has them in there, and it seems like just a good way to spill soda all over in your uh, important documents. I think these just snap in place. No, no, it's the whole thing. The whole dash. She's she's screwed. Got some CD holders up there if anybody listens to CDs anymore. Needs a headliner. Hopefully that cover saved the seat, but I'm guessing not. Duff likes it, so she's probably pretty chewy. Hey, go ahead, pop the hood, Duff. It's missing a beauty ring. This fender trim is shot. Well, that fender's got a little, little wave to her. I noticed both the bumpers were hosed because I got to stare at those for a long time on the way home. Well, one of them anyway. Again, the hood's pretty chalky. Duff, there was a kitty cat on your hood. Headlights are uh, pretty fogged up. I like the, what is it, like 95 to 98 grills better. So if I'm going to hang on it for a long time, maybe we'll see if we can search out one of those nicer grills with better headlights and such. This fender's good. Trim is good. Missing a beauty ring over here. Windshield's cracked. There you can see the rough just how not good that is up there wipers they're smoked this mirror is busted seven years bad luck you can just see what the paint does the stuff in the south i don't know is oklahoma considered south i think so we don't have that up here we do have guys with straight pipes though however that they have a lot of in the south they don't have straight pipes on there they just cut them off like mustangs mustang guys are a different breed isn't a mustang a breed of a horse how weird is that Oh, it's got the NOS light down here. Steering wheel. They're kind of the, the nice ones. Again, from all the sun down there. She's got a tack, 163,000. I like these gauges better than like the, what is it, 88 to 90, where they just have the slot and the thing just like travels up it. You try to wrap it around. I'm guessing all these gauges dance around because they're pretty notorious for that. What's it got a security system under there? Who knows? Duff likes the seat though. What else is back here? Oh, brake fluid. So there's brake issues. Not one, but two jugs. A tiny little nasty umbrella. More power steering. 
an ATF. So we definitely have an issue with the power steering if we do get it to run. And we're missing a lug nut cap somewhere. We're not missing it, it's just not on the pickup. There's the holder for the factory jack. I did buy this chain from them. Somebody said I needed one with a giant hook for, I think it was on the Rambler video, for snagging that and pulling it on because I fought with that. So, got one of those now, so you guys can't yell at me. I just will forget it. License plate bracket. Busted. The jack hardware. Well, oh, all that. Get a time it just right. There. Husky. Yo. He was a Shrine Temple supporter. Nothing wrong with that. Window tint, uh, mostly gone, but some of it's still there. Must have had a Harley, too, or a wannabe. Fender trim's missing over here, too. A little scuffy scuff there. Not much for whiskey dents, so pretty good. Oh, I guess the paint's baking off up here. But yeah, the inside of the box, some scratches, but it ain't all dinged up. A couple hooies in the top of the tailgate. Yeah, big old whammo in the bumper there. Ron Kraft, Chevy Olds Geo Incorporated. God, Geo, I haven't heard that in a while. B-Town Tejas. All right, let's uh, get the hood open. Let's see what we got under there. I'd have you open the hood, but you're really getting after it today. Carpet's gross, too. Probably why you like it in there. Got a looby doo of them hinges. Oh, another whiskey dent. Typical 88 to 98. Hood pop. Oh my gosh, look at the identity crisis on that air cleaner. Blue and green. Let's see if we can find a black one. That irritates me a lot. So there's our power steering leak somewhere. I don't know if it's the pump or the lines coming off of it. It is a, wait, wait. He said this thing was a 4.3. This thing's got a 350 in it. There's eight spark plug wires there. Are you kidding me? How did the guy not know? The difference between a 4.3 and a 5.7. Maybe it's 350. It is a 5.7. She got a 350 in her. That's how much I looked at this thing. Oh, clearly it does have an alarm. Beep boop beep. Boo. Oh, I wonder if that's gonna work with all the water in it. We'll have to try that out. Son of a biscuit, this is a good deal. Factory air, 350 automatic could be a four speed 4L60E or 700R4. I guess they would call it a 60 because I guess it's computer controlled. They did say it's got a new battery, so hopefully we don't need a battery sponsor this week. It's made in Korea, so you know it's good. Um, 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 um. Dual terminal, went all out. New battery cable ends. So here's the deal, they said it hadn't run in like three months. They had some issues with it. I'm guessing that's when they put the battery and the battery cable ends in it, it died. They put an ignition module in it and it ran, but not that good. And it was smoking. And then it just kind of quit running from what I heard several stories over the time. So I don't know. I'm just poking and hoping if this is no good, we get that six liter over there just begging to go in something. So we shall see. And uh, we already got Casper over here with the 4.3 in it. So kind of liking that thing. So let's hope for another 4.3. But we got two extra cylinders. So let's hook this up and uh, see if we need a battery sponsor, if they told us correctly that this is good. Let's see what she does. Oh, got the door dinger going. At least the battery's got juice. Shoot, the gosh dang hood light even works. What a deal, huh, Duff? Does it get any engine oil in it? We should probably check that. Where's the dipstick, Jimmy? Oh, look at that. I wonder if the AC works. Is it the high pressure? Look at this neat little dangly chain on it. Not a chain, but a strap, so you can't lose that cap. It looks like a new connector was put on there. Maybe it does work. That would be pretty neat. Don't be empty. Well, I guess it don't look as bad as I thought it looked. But the coolant. Oh. Well, he mentioned head gasket and smoke, so uh, maybe that's some of that. Should try the key duffel up, I guess. Service engine soon light on. Oh, the NOS is engaged. Oh, the gosh dang top of the ignition switch is broke.
So... We got a power issue or something, because, uh... I'm guessing that's why they had the battery, uh, unhooked. That's real annoying. So what's causing that? He did say they put a new... Is that a fuel pump relay? Some type of relay up there. Let's test this battery. Maybe yeah, low voltage issues causing some of this insane stuff. We didn't need that anyway. It says our battery needs to be charged. Imagine that. I'm gonna pull that out, swap in uh, one of our Florida Man batteries and then we'll see what happens. Shout out to Olsa Tools for hooking us up with some wobble extensions. Gonna work perfect for getting this battery out of here. Go check them out, olsatools.com. They got all kinds of neat stuff. Pry bars, screwdrivers, organizers, extensions that wobble. Do the wobble, 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 wobble. Got our DT78 sponsored by Florida Man installed. You can still hear it hissing in here, so. I'm thinking we got a electrical issue somewhere. Neutral safety switch. Wouldn't it be great if it was a starter? I mean, we haven't done one of those in like a month and a half. Hmm. What could they have possibly hosed up on here? Let me get the loser switch down there and see if we can just bypass all that. So I crawled underneath there, hooked up our loser switch. Starter's a little bit growly. We should probably shim that up, but cranks over. And while I was on there wedged in between the exhaust, and the starter, trying to hook that up, I had a, an Tiffany. That gal, she, she knows a lot about tight spaces. And, uh, you know, I was talking about that NOS switch. Well, it turns out that's part of the security, as is with that horn. And I'm guessing a security system from 1993 was probably installed by somebody doing too much Hoover schneef. So I think we're going to chase down those wires under the dash and everywhere else. And I'm betting that security is causing our issue. What do you think, Duff? Wouldn't that be friggin' sweet? We just pull off some butt connectors and some scotch clips and carry on with our life? I concur. You're so smart, Tiffany. What we'd do without you? If that fixes it anyhow. So let's rip into this. I'm guessing it's all under there somewhere. Watch out. Or go up there. I don't... One or the other. Thank you. <coughs> oh, move up that door. That's annoying. I think we're on to something. Let's looby doob these up first. Dang it, I hung out with Puddin' for a week and I'm saying Luby Doob all the time. Oh, sure enough, that's bent. Seems like the detent for all these 88 to 98s. Usually damaged. How bad are the hinges? Not too bad, actually. You mean to show him what we found, Duff? Yeah, he's not enthused. Look at all that. We need to uh, we'll watch Wesley work to come help us out, give us a schematic. This, I don't know if it was like an override button, was sticking up by the column. I don't know what that's all about. But then we got these inline fuses. Sure enough, scotch clips. We got some insulated butt connectors. And it's held in place with a bread tie, so it was done real good. Anytime you got an issue, always check for add-on stuff like a security system or a stereo or somebody put a freaking remote starter on it because people do this stuff and they're just terrible so i'm gonna try cleaning this up and see if oh that's their aftermarket little modulator more bread ties yeah anytime you see the old electrical guillotine scotch lock or wire twists. See, it just taps. That's the purple wire right there. That's, I think purple is for our starter circuit. That's what it used to be on the old school GM. See, I don't know a ton about these 87 to whatever, 95 TBIs or anything new for that matter. So you guys are going to learn with me, but it's, usually, it's all the same stuff, just slightly more complicated. So I think... We get rid of this scotch clip. That wire goes to that. I'm guessing this is a power wire they just tapped into it, didn't solder it, just taped everything in there. And uh, this probably, one of these probably goes up to this light. 
couple of grounds over here it looks like and then we just we probably could just splice this purple wire back together and carry on with our life so that's probably where we're going to start and then uh, ditch the rest later shoot it's not mower man it's mower kid everybody thought it was staged on the last one but literally that guy lives up the street and uh, unfortunately it's not DUI like you think it's it's other circumstances that it's kind of sad but it's his own fault so anywho uh, solid content and uh, I think we'll just uh, sneak him in here whenever he drives by it's usually in the morning so it's almost noon probably not gonna catch him today anywho still ripping into this thing um, yeah, there's a couple wires going to the horn. This thing was under the hood. I don't know, it's like, like a motion switch. I don't know, you gotta have it facing up. It wasn't pressed into the hood, so it's not like a hood pop switch. And now there's a guillotine up here into the headlight harness. And then we got our whatever little light on the dash, got that unplugged. And there's some little switch over here on the kick panel. Where is that at? This guy, no idea what that guy is. Another inertia switch of sorts, maybe? Looks like it's got some type of adjustment on it. I don't know. But we're getting close. I think we just got these couple wires up here left and we can put her back together. Give her a shot. I think we got everything gutted under there. I still got to uh, tape up that red wire. I used a heat shrink solder butt connector on the purple starter wire. That's kind of my go-to, just crimp it on, heat her up with the old Wagner heat gun. Good to go. Uh, there's a couple wires that kind of got marked up by the electrical guillotines, but we could tape them up. I'm not too worried about them. Definitely got to tape that power wire up there. But everything's pretty much gone. Like I said, there was one that was tied into the headlight switch, I suppose, for when you push the valve. Valet is what this thing's called. Light up the park lights, maybe. And then there was this little light switch on the kick panel, switch on the inner fender, and then the horn. And look at all this garbage that was in here. Just, that was the one that tied into the starter switch. So maybe we just got ourselves a good relay. Made in Canada, so it's a good one. Uh, the Excalibur AL700LC. Yeah, and then it's got an electrical schematic on the backside that lists LED light valet switch. So, yeah. So now that we got that out, let's hook our battery up. And... See if our dinging amazingness goes away. Well, we got a door buzzer going. Our dinging went away. Oh, that was our turn signal. Put it in park. Had that out of whatever. Park so that we could tilt that down and get this cluster surrounded. I think sounds good so far. Looks like they broke the ear off the... Uh, Ignition switch, that's kind of annoying. We got cranky crank. Now if we just add fuel. And spark. Whatever we're missing, I don't know. Let's pull that ugly air cleaner lid off. I think I got a black one on a core engine. We also need a wing nut. Be an awesome like K&N air filter. At least be a filter in there. Oh yeah, we got a filter, so that's a plus. Now, give it a tickle of the old hot sauce down the throttle body. That'll tell us if it's got spark. That was way too easy. All it was is a security system. Absolutely dumbfounded that somebody would park something for that, but it is what it is. Good for us. Running for a while, uh, smoking a little bit out here, so maybe the head gasket thing is right. A lot of smoke coming off the manifolds from the leaky valve covers. And then it just happened to die. So, didn't chug or nothing. Yeah, a lot of oil burning off the manifolds. So what happened? Is it got any fuel in it? It says half tank, but the gauge also does not move. Oh, 
the electrical guillotine. Whoever invented these should have these things pinched on their you-know-what repeatedly. They should just ban those things. Electrical guillotines need to go away. Let's see if it's a fuel issue. Maybe it's just out of gas. I thought it would have chugged. It just died like immediately after running for five minutes. Nothing. Did we lose sparkage? Let's clean up some of our mess here. I don't want that knife shoved in the you know what. Let's put that away. Cyclops, you can go on the toolbox. What do you call them, dikes or side cutters? Puddin, he calls them dikes. I call them side cutters. Maybe you got a cooler name. What if we flat foot it? I think we lost spark. Well, great. Is the loser switch still hooked up? We'll go get a spark plug checker. Well, let's do number two over here because that's the closest to the loser switch. Make sure we got a key on. Key is on, so we're bypassing. Well, we're not really, we're just bypassing the starters so I can see this. Because I don't have any help. Well, Duff, a lot of help. No sparkage. That's kind of what it sounded like when it died. I was sitting here admiring my work, thinking about cracking a cold one, and it just, just died. So what could it be? He said they put an ignition module in it. So, where's the ignition module on these? It's got a new coil on it. Oh, Russell the Muscle got himself an Econo line, van, white spokes, sunroof. Quite the dude, ain't he? All right. Squirrel! Squirrel! Let's see if we got spark coming off the coil. So this thing should spark eight times every rotation as opposed to just once while you get your spark plug. Nothing. So, could have a bad coil, could have a bad ignition module, could have a bad pickup in the distributor. It shouldn't be the cap rotor wires. Hmm. Where did he say this relay was for? Fuel pump or something? I'm gonna pop that cap off, take a peek in there, see if there's anything that tickles my fancy. So we got these two little tiny 5.5 millimeter screws out of the cap. And it looks like it ain't been replaced in quite some time. Oh my gosh. That is epic. I have never seen that much corrosion inside of a distributor cap. Wow. Let's find out where number one is at and uh, pull those wires off because I didn't get these last wires off. That's like an eighth inch of carbon buildup on there. I don't know if it's carbon corrosion, whatever you want to call it. It's bad. Got a lot of caps off and uh, this one takes the cake. I don't think there's a screw that holds a distributor on. The rotor on. That ain't coming off because it's been on there so long. Look at all that debris in there. Oh, look, it wore right into the tang on the rotor. This thing it just had to be running like absolute garbage when it was running. Literally the coil wire just wore right into that rotor. I'm guessing this is the ignition module back here. I don't think that... I think that's just a shield, but it shouldn't be rattling around in there. I'm going to go look at that other distributor I got, and maybe we'll just stab that whole thing in there. Well, we got the old one out. Look at that great big mud dauber right down there. That's something we don't have up here. They're like mosquitoes or wasps or something that live in there. I don't know. Let's hope that don't fall down. The hole we left exposed. I had this one laying out back. Uh, it was exposed as well, so it don't look real good inside. I never heard this one run. Uh, stripped the pickup out. The guy said it was run real hot. So I figured it wasn't worth saving. 
the engine. So stab that in there. This one, obviously the rotor looks way better. That reluctor wheel is a little bit rusty. Like I said, that might be for me leaving it sit without a cap on it. Because of course somebody came and borrowed that and never brought it back. Well, look at how much tighter that shield is on this one. I don't know. Can't imagine that was helping. But I'm thinking it was just the module. So, I don't know. That is an aftermarket module, it looks like. This one's still marked GM. Does this one say GM on it? Sure enough, it does. Let's stick a new gasket on it while we're at it, though. So that rotor was pointing pretty much perpendicular to the pickup. The wheel travel direction towards the driver's side. So, you can't just drop her right in the right spot. Just like so. Drop right in there. This is out of a 88 or 89. Should be the same. She was good about that. Slide that retainer back where she needs to be. And put just enough tension on it. Oh yeah, these things you don't really time mechanically. You unhook a wire up in here somewhere. I don't remember which one it is. We'll get to that. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. If we can get spark. Tighten this up. Put cap on. Oh, I wish I had a better cap, but we'll clean that one up a bit. Stab her back on. So we got our distributor stabbed in there. Coils hooked up. Caps on it. Kind of cleaned up. There's a lot of stuff in there. That cap definitely needs replaced. I did notice this number two wire and a pretty good rub on it. So yeah, that ain't good. I'm guessing that's going to cause a misfire. And I don't know if the wires in the back are new ones or used ones because people like to do that. Let's see if she pops off now. Like I said, I know nothing about that distributor. There it is. I think it's a bad module. As it gets warm, it dies. But I can't imagine this reluctor wheel issue is that good. She does smoke a bit. It's running again. I don't know why he was telling me to put an ignition module in. Maybe he meant coil. Coils freaking never go bad. I don't ever have a bad coil. Only I like the 3.8 GMs. I'm gonna leave this run for a bit, just see what it does. Maybe put some coolant in it. And then uh, we'll take it for a test drive, provided it's got brakes and shifts. Oh, when I was underneath there hooking up the starter at the Rear seal on the tranny is puking all over. Those are the spots on the trailer. We know the power steering's leaking, so maybe we'll do a little pressure washing on that, see if we can't find where it's leaking from. If it's just a hose or if it's the pump, it's just a loose connection. Might be easy as well, but it's actually running pretty good, but it's all that corrosion, like it'll idle good, but when you mash on or put a good load on, and then it just kind of hit and chugs and misses. And I wonder if that isn't what caused the module to go out. All that resistance in the, probably this part plug, I'm sure they're just as bad as the cap and rotor, but that cap and rotor being that bad adds a bunch of resistance to the system. So not only does it run bad, it probably took out that module. But that's my theory. I'm sticking to it. So the old dog days of fall are here. Should we go get some birds? Oh yeah, that perks him up. He likes birds almost as much as he likes ride. He probably likes birds bird hunting more than he does ride, so we might have to do some of that this afternoon. I know it's bird season. All right, so got the tranny topped off. That took like three quarts, so she's been leaking a lot, and uh, it's been run low. I did steal the air cleaner and air cleaner lid off that parts engine I got out back. You can see she's a little rusty because she's been sitting outside for nine months. The one that was on it had two studs holding it, and that one was a single, so I just stole the stud out of that throttle body and took the two out of here, and yeah. Weird, I guess, I don't know why. Some of them got two studs and then a single. We'll definitely throw all that stuff back in that donor engine just because might need that stuff someday. Because clearly we got enough donor engines laying around here. Just a couple of Y blocks, a couple of Ford six cylinders. And then uh, the 327 out of that suburban donor for the crew cab. Can never have too much junk. Cycled the AC, it's not working. It's got good oil pressure. Temp gauge is working. I did put some coolant in here. But the bad news is the coolant that I found in the bed that was like quarter full or half full is dex cool so i'm guessing that's why it looks really scuzzy in there 
I don't know if that's going to cause a head gasket to go out, but I know it's good at plug-in heater cores. When you mix the green and the orange, don't do that, kids. You're almost better off putting water in there, so we'll probably going to have to flush the cooling system on this at some point. Got our cover put back on here. That was laying in the toolbox for your fuse relay center, whatever you want to call it. Uh, topped off the power steering. Cleaned up that both the hoses down here, because that looks like where it's leaking, but they're both dry yet. Uh, valve cover gaskets are leaking as well, so that's on the list. I should probably check the brakes. Seems like there's a bunch of brake fluid in the back. Ah, oh, that looks good. I never did hit them. Get back in there. I always put rubber on, kids. But I think pretty close to going for a test ride. Who likes rides? That guy. Let's see how it starts warm. It's been running for about 20 minutes. Oh, I can't quite get my arm in there. What is that noise? Can you hear that? Fixed it. Did a really job, poor job of routing the spark plug wires. Don't fall on the manifold. Headers, that would have been burned out for sure already. Radio works. There you go, turn it down to nothing so you can't hear it. Like I said, if I crank up the AC, clutch didn't kick in. Maybe it's just low. Uh, we got 30 pounds of oil pressure at idle. Looks like she's sitting at about 180-ish degrees. Just about charging 14 volts, half tank of fuel. Got that cover put on back underneath there. Threw a couple of things out of the cab. Threw that visor, cover away. What do we got, pen? First United, ooh, was this girlfriend's pick? You're wild. Oh gosh. Love letter on the back. Nope, just says to and from. Mellow Smellow, Earl Brown Drive, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, it's made in Moron, Minnesota. So if you're from Mora, Minnesota, are you a moron? Uh, that's what I would say. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Duff, look at it. You don't care. Anything in the door pocket? Oh, USA Golds? Oh, is there darts in there? It can't be empty. You'd send these to the boys at Cold War Motors. Oh, Eagle 20s, but it's empty. They're not really classic darts either. Check those guys out if you haven't. Cold War Motors. They like the Mopars, but they, they'll take anything. We could probably get rid of this nasty key fob that doesn't do anything. Silly Excalibur. Oh my gosh, it's even charged up. All right, I think we're gonna close the hood on here. I'm gonna throw some sunglasses on because it's bright. You gotta move the trailer out of the way. And uh, take this thing for a rip. See what she'll do. Oh, I checked the tires. Well, I pumped up all the tires because they were all low, except for the one that I just put a valve stem in. Let's do this. See how the old Black Beauty does. Well, it's trying to go forward, that's a plus. Brakes are definitely dragging. Hopefully that's just from sitting. It did look like there was a new caliber on the left front. No mirror over here. Got that one until it falls off though. Oh goodness. She pulls hard left. That new caliper dragon? Or is that just because she's definitely in need of an alignment? Oh yeah, you gotta spin the tires to get her rolling. She's dragging so bad. That's a workout on the tranny. Still definitely pulling pretty good. Fuel gauge work. 
works. Well, it took 18 gallons and the gauge says it's full. So it must have a heck of a big tank on it. Well, the gauge is off. I suppose that caliper is going to, that steers hard too. Power steering pump out. On its way out. Sound terrible for having a huge exhaust leak. Training shifts good. Cruise control. Yeah, right. Uh, no cruise control. Son of a biscuit. She slides right around the corner. Was it G G80 or GT80? Is that the limited slip? I don't think so. Can't round up a good used alternator cap from the one that I borrowed. Alternator cap, distributor cap. Definitely sandwich time. The bad news is I couldn't find the distributor cap, and the even more bad news is I can't even put my hand on the wheel. So this rotor is dragging. Mucho bado. That's Spanish for not good. We're gonna head back and see if we can address that. Maybe she's hanging up on the slides. That's about all I can think of other than it just needs to be replaced. So not a bad first test drive. I mean, we made it back, didn't have to walk. Really, other than uh, the pulling issues, which I think is probably that caliper, uh, not too bad. And we didn't drive it very far, but let's uh, show you how hot that wheel is and not by putting my finger on it. What are you guessing? I'm guessing this thing's gotta be 140, 150. It says the concrete floor is 69, 70 degrees. And this wheel, oh my gosh, 260 degrees. That's how bad that thing's dragging. 88 degrees. So there's a 180 degree difference between these two things. Let's get this wheel off here and see what's going on. The heat is just radiating off this left front. You'd be crazy to run these tires up in the Midwest. Some of the tires you folks run down there in the South, you guys are crazy. Must be nice not to get snow. Lucky these plastic nuts didn't melt. Oh yeah, that hub's just smoking. Oh, awesome. Snapped off stud. That adds to it. What does Puddin say? If four don't hold it, five never would have. At least I take all the lug nuts off. I'm like that goof. Who doggy. So what's the issue? So it looks like it's a new caliper because it's never had paint on it. I'm guessing they were painted originally, but could be the brake hose. Sometimes those brake hoses will let pressure go in but not go back. It could be these slides hanging up, but it looks like it's dragging on both sides of the rotor. It's literally boiling the brake fluid right out of it. So what I'm trying to do there is see if now it'll turn. When you pressure on it, when you pressure, pressure on it. Oh my precious. My precious. So when you press on the brake, you're pressurizing the fluid going into here, and then it just kind of returns with what little spring force returns the uh, caliper, whatever. But there's a lot more pressure coming from that pedal than going that way. So if this brake hose is collapsed, I've seen where pressure will go through, but it won't allow it to return. So I'm just letting some pressure off there. Now, we'll see if it turns. I should have tested to see if it turned before. That sucks. We gotta put a wheel stud in anyway. Turns free as can be. I'm betting it's just that brake hose that's bad, holding all that pressure down there. So how do we fix that, you say? Well, with a new hose, but we don't have a new hose. Hmm, what are we gonna do? You got any ideas, Duff? Because if we just clamp it off with the locking players, it's gonna push past that, right? Right? I don't know what to do. 
what's up with this end? What's up here? So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and take the hard line off the rubber line and sneak one of my line locks in there, which is just a small nail. Just <whistles> stick that in there, it'll block this wheel off. We can drive it just fine until we get new brake hoses. So it's a pretty easy fix. Um, again, a little misdiagnosis on the previous owner's end. They had brake shoes and they'd put a caliper on it and really it was just a brake hose the whole time. I think anyway, what do I know? Not much. Oh yeah, I'm gonna order a wheel stud. I don't know why that broke off. Those uh, rotors look pretty good too. I'm guessing our brakes are glazed over, but we got some in the back and they'll be just fine. Let's slide our hard line out. Slip our little nail in there. I'll try this at home, kids. I don't know if we can get it to start. Now with that nail in there, we shouldn't be getting any pressure out here. So, I mean, obviously we're not gonna have brakes over here, but it should alleviate the dragging issue as well. Time to get cleaned up, eat some pizza, and order some parts. Well, now when I hit the brakes, it's gonna pull to the right, I got a feeling, but we'll bring the heat gun with, take another, another test drive, and uh, see if that resolved the issue. Before we go any further, before we order any parts, because we might need more parts, who knows? I'm gonna save this lug nut cap with the other one. We're gonna throw this lug nut away. Duff, go for a ride. And he gone. Well, I'm fairly certain that that was the issue that the brake hose is just uh, keeping pressure held down on that caliper. So we'll test it out. We gotta go find Duff. He's out looking for birds. So we guess I'll go looking for birds with him. Oh, it already rolls so much smoother. You almost have to hold the brake now to keep her slowed down. Doesn't pull anymore. Hit the brakes, it pulls to the right, just like I thought it would. The brakes are way more gooder. Oh, it's gonna be harder to do burnouts now though. Harder to do NASCAR stuff where you're cutting around the corner as well. Would be sweet to get the cruise to work. I suppose I could check the fuse. Other than that, I don't really know what to check. Get her out on some gravel, see if we can find some birds, huh, Duff? You're just full on hanging out over there. Oh yeah, it drives on the road way better. Still pulls a little bit. Of course, getting close to Donut Corner and somebody's gotta be coming. I don't even think I gotta measure the temperature on those brakes. I'm already, I can just tell. I can't smell it. Feels good. He slides corners, huh, Duff? We just gotta get some parts on order. Be a good rig. Well, I suppose she'll flip one.
tough. What do you think of the old black bandit here? You like it? Works pretty good for hunting the old ditch parrots. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Yeah, can you say pretty bird? Pretty bird. Yes, pretty bird. So yeah, we just gotta round up one more. Just did a quick walk of that little slough over there. Duff jumped them both. Poo! This one actually dropped right in Mickelson Racing's driveway. So, one more to get. Well, that's how it's done, huh, Duff? Come here, show them what you got. No, we can't. No, you got to come back. We got our limit. Three. That's all we can do. Remington 870, Britney Spaniel, and a 92 Chevy. Remember them videos? Like a rock. Good stuff. We got to get back to work before we lose the shop. All right, let's go. What do you think? Make a good enough hunting rig for us? Parts rig, shop truck? I'd say so. Load up so we can take some majestic pictures for the old Instagram. What a sunset. Only ruined by that stupid hound across the road barking away. What do you think, Duff? He just wants to go chase some more birds. We're all limited out though. I think this thing is a pretty solid little truck. Put about 25 miles on it. And couldn't smell anything. We were really at like 260, 280 before. 80 degrees. And we just drove it in 10 miles. This thing's good. Good oil pressure. No funny noises. Gotta fix that brake. Yeah, this side is now warmer. Well, this side is the side that's working. The other side ain't working at all. So yeah, put some brake hoses on it. If we're gonna do one, we might as well do that one. If we're gonna do those two. We might as well do that one back there as well. And uh, yeah, get a tune up in it. A couple other odds and ends. Oh yeah, that tranny, we need to figure out. We need to slide in a rear seal on that. See if we can't figure out where the power steering leak is. Gotta get a mirror. Looks like you can get a pair on Flea Bay for pretty cheap. I was hoping I could just get the glass so I didn't have to take everything apart. If I'm gonna take everything apart, I'm gonna go to the smaller sport mirror style. Uh, but yeah, a good cleaning is gonna go a long ways. Speaking of cleaning, we got some birds to clean, so we're gonna get some parts on order, clean some birds. We got supper to go with our sandwiches tonight. Fresh cock. Sounds weird when you say it like that, but ditch parrots galore. All right. Duff, you gonna clean these birds? They ain't gonna clean themselves. Yeah, he's no help. Well, look what uh, we took the skitter out and found in the scrap pile. A bunch of scrap. So there's the frame rail off the donor square body, 82 Suburban. The front subframe out of the 62 crew cab. I think we're gonna call that the crude cab based on the comments you guys given. And uh, Duff sniffed out this front bumper here. Looks like it's got one little ding right there, not bad. The uh, fake chrome's dinged up. Not really a fan of these bumperettes, but they're there. Oh, we could have tow hooks if we really wanted it. And this license plate bracket way better than what we got. So, tech tip of the day. Don't throw everything away. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. We're gonna rob this thing off of there. Even save the brackets just in case mine are mangled on that black pickup. What else do we need here? This one's four wheel drive, so not much we can use. Uh, this backstory on this thing is a local guy called me, said, hey, we blew up the engine in this thing. It ain't really worth fixing. It's pretty used up. We ran her real hot. He was honest with me. So I uh, gave a few bucks for it. Oh, got that seat out of it that Duff slept on all winter. And made a pickup box trailer out of it. That's about it. Sold a few odds and ends. Sold the pickup box trailer, basically. Put a few bucks in her pocket. Oh, and then I like sold the computer for the TBI. Sold the 4L60E transfer case. Some other odds and ends, but we got a bumper that's way better than what we got. I'm gonna pop that off there. Here we go. There you have it, one fresh used bumper. Don't throw your junk away, right kids? You never know what you might need.
back to the scrap pile with this. Let's see if I can't get this bumper pulled off. I think you're supposed to take the grill out and then this little uh, splash piece in there to get these top bolts, but we're gonna try to get creative. We'll see. I know I can get the one on the other side. I don't know. This, this probably isn't gonna end well for me or said bumper or the new bumper. What do you think, Duff? He's steering clear. Don't that look better? Now we got a spot to hang our license plate. So it's legit. It's got a little tweak over in this corner, so we put the floor jack underneath it. It's better than it was. I don't know if that was the way it was on the pickup or if for me shoving around with the skid steer, but not a huge fan of the bumper rats. Again, this bumper is way better than what we had on there. So yeah, it's pretty good. Also, while I was underneath there, uh, you know that power steering leak? I figured it was gonna be on the pump. Now it's coming out the pitman arm shaft on the steering box, so maybe we'll have to order a seal for that. I don't have very good luck with those, so we're going to probably have to put a steering gear on it. Now, messing with the crews, remember that column that came with Casper that uh, I was going to throw away? I stole the steering wheel just to have because I like steering wheels. But I thought, oh, maybe you could use a cruise switch on that. Because I did a little research on the online, and everybody says these cables rub through. But everything looks good on this one. Not saying this one's any better or worse. But then some guys say it's this multifunction switch for your brake pedal. Like it, one of these circuits is for your brake lights, and then one of them's for the cruise and I don't know what the other one's for but anywho it'll say that your brake lights will work but your, it won't work for the cruise because it's separate circuits one's normally opened and one's normally closed yeah so they work opposite of each other right Duff you're a stinky wet dog stinking up my interior anyway I tested this and sure enough the brake circuit works but the cruise circuit provided it's that one well neither of these has continuity at any point so I think we got a bad switch. So I stuck basically a paper clip in there. Now we're gonna go test on it. See if the cruise works. Wouldn't that be freaking neat? How freaking how neat is that? What else do we do? Oh, we threw the stock battery back in it. So we got Florida Man's battery back. I did order a bunch of parts for this thing. The blower motor's making noise now. So yeah, that's great. We should maybe take a look at that. Huh, Duff, before we go for a ride, take it outside, get it all wet. Yeah, that's just it. It's raining out, and we got no wiper blades. I mean, they're, yeah, they're bad. So we're just winging it. And we're also not going to have brake lights, so... Sketchy! Good news is, these things just kind of clip over the pedal, and then they clip over the pivot rod up there. No tools required. You just take your fluke meter, test that out. All right, should we look at that blower motor, Duff? Have them show you the noise it makes. Fan. Yeah, even Duff's like, what is that noise? Just wait till you turn it off how noisy it gets. What's in there? It's angry on Duff. <laughs> and you can see the cover's loose down there. I'm guessing somebody's been banging on it. Because that's how you fix a blower motor. You just wrap it with something. Works on starter motors, so why wouldn't it work on blower motors, I guess? Yes, I'm going to take your spot. Oh, yeah, somebody's been. Oh, thanks for the. Come on. Yeah, I think she's just uh, giving up the ghost. So, she got one of those on order too. Oh, we'll put a new bulb in the dome light. I'm guessing this bulb down here is shot. How do we get that out of there? Well, this is going to be shot when I drop it on the floor. Oh, it don't look bad. Let's see if we get a new one of them. 
because we want it definitely to be bright in here so we can see all the nastiness. We got some good news. We got the cruise to work. The bad news is everything's hosed up. So that brake switch down there, I guess we'll call it the brake switch. That is bad. So we bypassed that. Got that figured out. Still no cruise. So they say these switches are bad or can wear through the wires or whatever. So I had this column and sure enough, it had rubbed through right where uh, the cruise switch, which is this guy, fits through this. You wanna know something stupid? Just how easy these things are to take apart? Watch this. Boop, they just pop right off. Anyway, since the wires were bad on this one, I decided to rip this all apart, uh, fully knowing that it can never go back together again. And we cut the wires where they were cut, spliced them back together, tested for continuity down here, and tried to figure out what was going on. You know, you don't have any wire collars down here. So we got wire collars up here, and then I traced continuity back and forth. So I determined that green is basically your power for everything. So if you green to red, that engages your cruise. Green to yellow, that's for your accelerate. And green to blue is your inhibit or on. So if that doesn't have continuity, nothing's gonna work. So, and if you flip that off, that kills everything. And then, this is my terrible drawing of the switch. This is like some Watch West work stuff. That guy draws good schematics. He gets his engineering paper out and everything, but this is my little connector that I did. Cause you gotta figure out which of those four connectors is what. So I figured which color is what. Twisted all this together, laid it on the floor. Duff and I took her for a test drive. And with that brake pedal switch, we got cruise to work. So now we need a brake pedal switch, which is kind of scary when that's not hooked up. So you're fumbling around on the floor trying to figure out how to turn the cruise off. And then we need that cruise switch, but it's like 125 bucks for Rock Auto. There's one on eBay that says it doesn't fit, but it fits like the earlier GMs. Sure looks the same to me. And that's like 25 bucks. I think we're gonna gamble on that and see if it works. We're gonna put them both at the same time. If we had that pedal one, then I could just have that one on the dash that I kind of built over there. We can just kind of reach into the dash and hit it, but it's kind of janky. I don't really like that for 25 bucks. We'll fish a new one down the column. I wonder if that 82 Suburban, what that does. Is that the same thing? Oh, she's kind of sloppy. See, that one screws in. That one doesn't just pull in and out. Yeah, way more than you wanted to know. So you got to have your brake pedal switch. And then you gotta have your inhibit switch on, and then you gotta press your engage switch. So, yeah, I guess we could rip into that one and try to figure out why we don't have continuity. So the, the issue with this one, I checked continuity down below, and I got continuity on the uh, engage, but I don't have continuity on the inhibit. I think I got continuity in Excel, which I don't really care about Excel. I don't ever really use that, but. And we could just twist together the blue wire and the green wire for this inhibit, but seeing how the brake switch doesn't work, that would be downright scary. And yeah, dangerous. So I don't wanna fish this through the column and figure out I can't. If it's in the wiring, I could probably fix that. But if it's in this switch, they're not really meant to come apart and go back together again. And I kind of want to have that for my wipers and my headlights and everything else. So I don't know if I want to rip into that. Maybe I'll have a sandwich and think about it. All this schematics and ohm meters and splicing wires and watching YouTube videos on how to take stuff apart. Makes my head hurt, makes me thirsty. Coors casserole. Pork chop in a can. That's what we're having tonight. All right, I'm gonna do some thinking on this because I don't have anything with crews. So wouldn't that be neat? Well, just like every stuck engine debacle that comes in this place, we've clearly taken it way too far. I traced that wire all the way up to two inches from the switch, and that's where it's broken. So now I'm gonna try to use the wire from that column that came with the Casper. I'm gonna try to fish that up there and hook that up. It's not a good idea, but we're gonna do it, ain't we, Duff? He's lost interest as well. I'm uh, way too deep in this thing to quit now, so let's fish this through there. Oh, tech tip of the day. Get yourself some 
twisty wire, I don't know, a little bit thinner than mechanics wire. Tie that to the one end, well, you tape it to it, and then you bend it over so that it doesn't get caught, and you tape it some more, and then whoosh, fish her up. All your electrician guys are like, duh. And then we'll fish it back through with that. It's not gonna be fun. I don't think it's gonna go very well, but whatever. We're gonna do it. Here we go. What do you think, Duff? You like Blackie here? Should see if we can go get some more birds. All right, you take the gun. No. There you go. Don't shoot your face off. We're gonna get another limit today. Yeah, I doubt it. What do you think, Duff? Since it was raining, I already stuck the new wiper blades on. That's like one of my least favorite jobs ever. Nobody can make wiper blades that are the same from manufacturer to year, make models. You gotta read instructions. Like, can't they all just use the same style and just clip on or whatever? But it's probably because I worked at a parts store and we installed wiper blades for free in college. And when does everybody need wiper blades installed? When it's raining and it sucked and people were ungrateful and just not a fun job so rant over got these on they work pretty good i like these whatever beam style ones personal preference rock auto parts came in that's where those came from so let's uh get a mirror on this thing so i can see what's going on behind me so i can watch all the fumes coming out of the tailpipe even though it's on the other side so i think i'm gonna try to scrape off some of this residual from the last one and then it come with some adhesive strips here, but they look kind of cheesy and not good. So I'm gonna see if I got some better, maybe some 3M stuff. What do you think, Duff? Yeah, you just wanna go for a ride, I know. Super scraper time. Got some 3M VHB. VHB stands for something like very high stickiness once this stuff's on there she's on there for good all right we're getting the hoover schneef cutter out and taking no for an answer well, there is a left and a right so that don't look right Oh, what the French toast. Oh, that was almost seven years of bad luck right there. I don't think this son of a biscuit's gonna fit. It ain't right. Did we chip it already? Yep. I don't like the way it fits around there, but nobody's ever gonna know the difference other than you guys. Like we say, good enough for the girls we go with. The radius there, it's, it's too tight of a radius, or too big of a radius. The gap, I should have had it down further too, but. Whatevs, it's on. It'll serve its function. Like I said, this didn't really fit up right. There's a gap down here, gaps in the corners, but that's really the only lens they offered other than the sport mirrors, which is what I'd like to put on this thing, but see how everything else cleans up and everything else goes. And we'll go from there. Now, I did pick up a rear bumper. So let's whammo that thing on here. A buddy of mine had that. It's off a 98. It looks pretty much the same thing. They did cut a hole for some type of trailer socket here, which is kind of hideous, so... What if we can't put something over that? And there was a little ding in it somewhere. Yeah, right there. It ain't perfect, but for a case of beer, can't go wrong. So thanks for that, Pookie. Let's uh, get the other one off. Go from there. See how much water I get to have dripped in my face while I do it. Now I gotta rob these two tabs for the license plate lights. 
grab one of the license plate lenses out of there. And we'll have to get the license plate off of that. And we'll even save that. Is inch and seven eighths or two inch? Probably inch and seven eighths. This thing is a bugger. Bugger. Yeah, you pretty much gotta take all the brackets off and or loose. Didn't just slide out of the frame. These brackets kind of hook in there, so they're a real pain to sneak out of there. You always gotta turn them sideways, which you can't do when they're bolted to the bumper, so. Now you know. Don't bolt it off, unbolt it from the frame. Unbolt it from the bumper. All right, I'm gonna swap those parts over and stick her back on there. Kind of how I figured it was gonna go. Now I got a bolt in each one of those brackets coming off the frame, so hopefully they can't fall out and cut my toe off. Cause that wouldn't be pleasant. I mean, you guys would find it entertaining. Perfect. Just stay there. Also, before I forget, roll pans. Not a fan of roll pans. Sorry, Kool-Aid man. Don't get me wrong, they look okay on some vehicles, but especially a four-wheel drive, don't ever pull it on a four-wheel drive. There you go, what do you think, Duff? She's tipped down a little bit, so I gotta have somebody help me hold it up and adjust it to get her cantered back up where it needs to be. A little disappointed at that big gaping hole there, but maybe we'll get like a seven pin trailer socket and put in there, even if it's not functional, or I guess we could hole saw something onto that bumper and maybe TIG it in there so it didn't look as obnoxious, but what do you expect for a $20 bumper? So, I think that pretty much wraps the old bumper swap. But yeah, there is uh, a lot of hardware holding these things on, a lot of adjustments, so it's kind of a two-person job. You can see it's gotta go in on this side, and I think it needs to be shifted over that way here. And this side needs to come out. The whole thing needs to be tipped up. Yeah, two-person job. So, on to the next debacle on this thing. I don't even know what it is right now. I think it's sandwich time though for the night. I think that tire's leaking down. We gotta address the tire situation too. Those things are downright scary. And winter time is coming. I don't know much I'm gonna drive this thing in the winter, but even on a slick day, those things are kind of scary. Which, it's done nothing but rain for the last five days since I got back from Oklahoma. So, Alright. Punch it out for the night. Well, since Duff and I both put this thing in the rhubarb due to locking up the brakes on some gravel, and by brakes, I mean that single brake over there, and we do a little wee We should probably fix the brakes. So let's get those new hoses on. Or at least this one. Take the nail out of there. What do you say, hey? And we should probably fix that wheel stud. What else we gotta fix when we get it up in the air? Some leaks? Yeah. Ah, those ain't from this, but everything we got's got leaks. Story of my life. So we got our new wheel stud pressed in. Surprisingly, not all the grease was baked out of these bearings and they look pretty good. I probably should have got some new wheel seals and grease those up, but they'll be fine for another 160,000. Like I said, that caliper looks new. Like they were fighting this hose issue. 
Because that hose don't look very new. Put a caliper on it. And new brake shoes. Brake shoes. Brake pads. Idiot! Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, a little misdiagnosis there, but you know what? Since we're this far, I see no reason. We shouldn't just keep going and do some other cool stuff like maybe put a different spindle and spring on there. What do you think, Duff? Yeah. That's right. I uh, ordered another DJM kit. We got two inch drop springs, two and a half inch drop spindles, flip kit for the rear with a notch, new U bolts, all that good stuff. And let's get there. Shock relocation kit and new shocks for the rear. So we're gonna do all that stuff. You guys know how that goes, so we'll just clicker and fast forward. You guys can watch Duff and I work super fast. And don't worry, it's still gonna be a work truck. It's a pickup around here when we get done. Yeah, we had two Y blocks and a transmission big four speed in the back of it this weekend. Had her squatted out about two inches further and it had been just right in the back. Yeah. There might even be some new uh, wheels and tires when we're at it. Not new, new to this pickup. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep taking the brakes apart, keep taking the suspension apart. Hopefully not knock my teeth out with that spring, because that wouldn't be good. Look like I'm from Oklahoma. Although that pudding character, he's, oh, never mind. He just went to the dentist, got eight more put in right before I was there. But uh, I'll take that dust shield off. Got to do upper lower ball joints, tie rod ends. I don't know if we're going to have to do the sway bar or not. We might have to get the sway bar loose so that we can get this drop down. We shall see. All right. You going to paint them spindles where we put them on? Heck no. We're going to leave them cast. As cast. Let them get all nice and rusty. Nobody's going to see under this thing. There's something new. Want to uh, unthread the top of the shock, and it just kind of spun right out. Blew the ram right out of that cylinder. How neat is that? Oh, the nut came off on the inside. We just got to take that shock part, put that nut back on in there, be good to go. Just when you thought you'd seen it all. Look at there, we got the left side done. Got our hose hooked up, still gotta bleed that. Still gotta hook up the sway bar, but we gotta get the other side unhooked and hook them up at the same time. Got our new shock put in there, new spring, and a new spindle. Getting her low. You can see these are the original ball joints. They're riveted in, replacement ones are bolted in. I know we could have put new ball joints and tie rod ends and all that stuff in there, but this is a budget and all that stuff seemed to be just fine. When we go and get it aligned, they'll check all that stuff. And like I said, I've been driving it. Everything seems good. It's just gonna be a work rig, so yeah. I mean, we could have done all new brakes and wheel bearings and wheel seals, which we should have done, right Duff? But it is what it is. We can do all that stuff later if we need to. I tell you what, Wes, if you're watching, go ahead and uh, move on down to Oklahoma. You don't have to worry about rust down there. Get out of the rust belt of Illinois. This stuff is good. Didn't break off any bolts. Didn't have to use any penetrating oil even. This thing's great. Look at that. That's, that's original paint on the control arms. Real nice. Duff approves, don't you, buddy? 
All right, we're gonna go over to the other side and do it all over again. Except we don't have to uh, put a wheel stud on that side. Oh, such an attention whore. Don't rub against that grease, you goofball. Oh man, you got it on you. Dang it. Just can't keep you cleanish. Yeah. All right. Pick up all the tools, carry them to the other side, would you? Yeah. No. No. <clears throat> oh, I need a sandwich too. <laughs> So we got the front end wrapped up and I think we're calling her a night. Duff's over here passed out on the old Casper square body seat. So it's time to go home. So everything went pretty swimmingly. Like I said, there was two new brake pads sitting in the back of the pickup. Found out why, they only did that side. There are new hoses on both sides, new springs, new shocks, new spindles. I did notice that this side's got a snapped off stud or a new stud and a new lug nut so apparently they broke one off on each side or did one on this side and one was close on the other side don't ask me why that is sway bars hooked back up steering's all hooked back up i should grease all that well, i got the grease gun out i did grease the outside bearing because it's easy to get at and they're smaller so figure they could use it if i had wheel seals i'd do the insides as well but i didn't even look to see if i had them let's be honest so we're calling her night, right Duff? Yeah. Hey, if you would, check down below the uh, Duff approved membership. There's some special benefits you guys get there. Some discount on merch. If you don't have any merch, check it out. I'm wearing my special merch because I had to get one with a pocket. And of course we couldn't get them with pocket and special order. But yeah, if you guys want some merch, get a stocking cap because it's that time of season where you gotta wear long sleeves and stocking caps. Maybe there's something else that uh, catches your fancy on there. Maybe buy a gift for somebody else. Yeah, check that out down below. Duff approved and the merch site. We're calling it a night. We'll see you guys in a couple minutes. And then we're gonna go do the rear end. Seems like the back end's always more labor intensive, but whatever. Front's done. I think I started about six o'clock. It's about nine o'clock. Had a guy stop in. Mess around for about a half hour, so two and a half hours through the front. Uh, that's with no issues. I guess I did have to press that stud in there. But yeah, these Oklahoma rigs, no rot, no rust, brake lines ain't twisting off. So good. All right, see you guys tomorrow. What do you think, Duff? New day? Same crappy old project, just going from the front to the back. Well, get her lifted up. The wheels off and pull the leaf springs out. All that fun flip stuff. So, I was doing some pondering here. Wondering how old these tires are. 16 16. These things are made in the 16th week of 2016. So, they're only five and a half years old. Not as old as I thought. I figured they would be like 10 years old, right, Duff? Those Okies, they like running garbage tires. 
I think I checked that one and that one's from 2014. These things are all different tires. That's a Wrangler, 235.75. This is a Starfire, 235.75. Left rear is a Uniroyal Liberator. And this is a 30 by 950 15. And the front left is a Dextero. Four different tires. Interesting. Stuff you people do in the south. Well, grab the jack. Literally the only thing left to drop that diff out of there is the park brake cables. You guys know what we do with park brake cables. We're gonna try to take it off the right way this time. I'm not giving it a very good chance, but they gotta make them so freaking complicated to take apart. Duff says, I gotta see this. This guy's now gonna take a park brake cable off the right way. You excited or what? Okay, see what we can figure out. So all the way up here below the driver's door, there's our mirror we replaced. Is this little push connector thing. So we gotta slide these two together to get that out. And this cable goes all the way back. Goes into this coupler here. And goes to the left brake. And right about here, as part of that coupler, goes over to that brake. And they go through two separate holes in the leaf spring, so you can't just unhook it up there and fish them all through. You gotta separate them from one another. What do you think, how's my work look? All right. So, we're gonna see if we can't use the old lock and pliers scenario to knock our own teeth out. Hey Wes, is there a tool for this? Probably. So this one's got to go that way. So we're doing some crisscross applesauce action here. And we don't care which one comes out. Yeah, right. Oh, she's in mice. This thing's got an automatic. It's never going to pull a trailer. Seems like the cables are free though. I just had an epiphany. So then I pull down on this, pulls that cable out. Tiffany says, pull that cable out, clamp her with your locking pliers. And then that'll give you some slack, maybe. How are we gonna hold that? Tap that all at the same time. Duff, can you hold something here? A thumbs excuse every time. So I noticed that not only could you get some slack out of this, get some slack out of that. Oh, what's this? It's winter time. Does he wear a mask to keep warm? Forking A, he does wear a mask to keep warm. Still got the uh, pajama pants on though. You guys didn't think Lawnmower Man was real. Not a paid actor. So now we just need to figure out how to get those split apart so that we can fish them over their perspective sides, right, Duffelopagus? Wait till it's really cold out and you gotta see them bundle up. Good stuff. So like I said, we gotta figure out how to get that mess separated. Oh, there is a nut on that though. Maybe we can just take that apart. Maybe. Could we be so lucky? Oh, well, like I was saying, this cable comes out and then this cable comes out. So I was just pulling on this one cable here 
and there was still some slack in that cable so I pulled them both through and just clamped it up here. I don't know how you'd do this on a truck from the Midwest because we like to get them rusty here. Let's go. Oh, we can just fish that through. So we'll have this side done. So now we just got the passenger side left. Looks like there's a clippy dippy do up there, so just gotta squeeze that together somehow. You know how long this has taken? He's already ran and got the groceries and taken his mask off and is on his second trip. That's how long this has taken. But you know what's coming next? Yep. <clears throat> She's getting the death wheel. Oh, and the Cyclops is dying down there too. So much death. So we can't get this through the hole up here. And uh, so we just gotta cut this little clip off. We're not completely annihilating it. Just trimming that clip off. What are we gonna cut to not screw anything up? Didn't do what I was hoping it would do either. Son of a biscuit. This is not the screwdriver I want to pry with. Oh, for cheese and rice. Just give up already. And that whole nut spins off. That's not two separate pieces. Just did all that for nothing. God, I feel dumb. What farkin' size are you? Well, we finally dealt with some rust. So I couldn't get this nut off. The locking pliers was just spinning on whatever you call this bolt. So we fixed it by uh, just putting a little notch right there and sneaking it out of there. Shouldn't affect anything. That sucked. I think I just spent like 45 minutes getting that out of there. Just as much time as it took to get everything else out. But I think we're ready to drop her to the ground. Gotta take a couple of U-bolts off yet. I'm good to go. Remember I said the transmission rear seal was leaking? Well, that's right here. You can see that there is a small groove on the yoke. You always want to check that. But it's gonna likely ride in a different spot as we move the rear end up. So I'm not too worried about that. It's not a very big groove anyway, but something I always check. Also, you can see there's no snap rings on these. They're glued in. So most of the original U-joints with 160,000. They're nice and tight too. So, while we got that drive shaft out, I'm gonna crawl underneath there, whack a seal in. And while we got the diff out, we're going to go ahead and put a new brake line on there as well. Because I'm sure that's got 160,000 miles on it. Look at them backing plates, Wes. My rear diff cover. Not even rusty. Still got black paint on them. Duff likes it. So I'm going to do that quick. And then uh, we'll get to pulling leaf springs out. Oh, what's that, Duff? An aluminum spare? Oh, we even pumped it up. How long do you suppose that's going to last? Oh my gosh. Trailer wiring. Oh yeah, just splice it in there and tape it up. Good enough. Look at this. New shocks. They didn't even cut the band off when they put the new shocks in. At least they're uh, newer than the fronts. We'll go ahead and snip that so no dolphins get caught in it when we throw it in the trash. Looks like somebody put a new fuel filter on. Trying to diagnose some of the issues. Broke the latch, pull it in there. We don't need that latch anyway. Looks like the exhaust hanger is about ready to fall out. And I don't think the muffler is supposed to turn and the exhaust stays in one spot. That's one of them uh, flexi mufflers. That's why it sounds so good. Got some ventilation going on. Good stuff. See how much tranny fluid I can spill on myself. All of it. Oh. Yep. That was gonna happen. Probably should have checked to make sure that this seal fit over the yoke, but 
I picked it out myself via the rock auto, so can't even blame it on the parts guy. Looks close enough. Good enough for the girls we go with. Oh, USA even, national. It's a part number 4583 for anybody who's doing a two-wheel drive 4L60E or maybe 700R4. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm sure none of those vibration issues have anything to do with plumber's tape, custom made bent bracket held in with a little tiny metric bolt. What's this, a washer welded on there with a quarter inch bolt? Ooh, but he's got a nylock on there. Nothing but the finest for Oklahoma. Now we gotta get a diff on top of here. And I suppose if you really wanted to, you could slide the axles out and sneak her through here. They tell you to drop the leaf springs down, both of them, all the way out. We should just be able to take one end or another. I'm thinking this end is gonna be easier, although the fuel tank is in the way over there. And I think these straps gotta go bye bye. Man, you can still see the hex there. Usually that is not present in rigs around here. So, what are the odds that comes out? The issue with these spring eye bolts is there's rubber in there and then there's a steel bushing. And usually when you start turning that bolt, that steel bushing spins with it. So, kind of a bugger to get them out of there. But, let's see what happens. Let's see if we can't get a spring down. Guess what time it is? No, it's not time to put the pickup on the ground. It's arts and crafts time. My favorite. Duff's favorite too, isn't it? Hey, there you are. So we got the rear end set in place. We still gotta tie up some loose ends, obviously, but we gotta lift this thing all the way up. So we're barely off our jack stands. And then we mark the center of the axle, which conveniently lines up pretty much with the center of this bed cross member here. Right? You inspected my work? Of course. So, now we gotta put our C-notch in, or frame support, as DJM calls it. So what I like to do, save my old beer boxes, Keystone, pretty much all this stuff's good for, because it's way easier to work with than regular cardboard, so just take and fold them up like that, and stick them in the corner for a rainy day. Got that all trimmed out where we got to cut out we got our center line marked so all we got to do is line up that center line and we'll have to make a new center line on this side long side goes forward this is the long side and this is the short side and then put that up there mark out where we need to cut nip her out of there make sure that you got your tail light wires out of the way and your brake line and shouldn't have any fuel lines but don't cut through your taillight harness. I've never done it, so don't ask me how I know, but I'm sure people have. So, we're gonna do that now. Nips a daisy this sucker in there. Well, we might have to take some hardware out. Guessing these two hold the brake line bracket. I don't know what that one holds. Just kidding. How is that gonna work? That looks like it's taller than the frame rail. I'm going back to the drawing board a second here. Oh, we trimmed her up a bit. 
Still freaking bigger than the frame rail. All right, so we line this up with our line. We push that up as high as it'll go. And then we just trace her out. Should just be that easy, right? Of course it cuts that bolt off. It's too bad for that guy. Hopefully he's not important. So we got our lines bungee corded out of the way. That's right. Nothing but the finest at Mordski Repair. By lines, I mean the brake line, singular, and the tail light harness. And then I took these two bolts out. That's, they were for clamps to hold the harness and brake line. So we'll have to figure something out there. Maybe we can get it up in place and get it marked. I think this one will actually go back in. Let's put it all back together. We're going to probably have to drill holes for this bracket up here, which is for the uh, brake line, brake hose bracket. But I think we can put it all up there and we can, we'll have to take these out and then we'll drill holes in the frame for that bracket. And then we can mark it from the backside, pull it off. It'll be a bunch of messing around, but it'll be fine. Here we go. Oh, so much more room for activities. Look at all this floor space. Up. So we do aerobics in here. So many activities. Do step class. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. Now, just gotta drill some holes for that. I'm gonna take some of these 11R locking pliers, clamp this son of a biscuit into place. Maybe. Just kidding, not happening. And these are half inch, so we'll take a half inch transfer punch. That's right, I remembered the name this time. That way we know that our hole, or at least our mark, is right in the center. If you don't have a set of these, they're like 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. You can just take a half inch drill bit and mark them with that. We just need to drill some holes. That'll make life easier. We're just gonna go right up to a reamer. Half inch reamer, half inch bolt. These things just don't bite. They make a nice round hole. I don't need to explain to you why. It's in my other videos. Get some life-changing experience. This is the most holes I think I've ever drilled with this DeWalt. You know what the key is? You get one of these Amazon adapter kits. Oh look, you can even plug your USB into it. And you put a frickin' Milwaukee battery on it. My Milwaukee drill took a crap. This drill's been around. And I can't keep batteries for this thing because they keep going to crap. So, fixed it. Best way to fix a DeWalt, put a Milwaukee battery on it. Now you know. So there you go, just gotta tighten it up, gotta put the bump stop in. I think this hole for that clamp will clear. Uh, we obviously eliminated this clamp. And then we'll have to drill two holes here for our brake line bracket, because you know, we don't want our brake line and hose just flopping in the wind. Because if we lose that, uh, then we can't stop. So yeah, I think that'll uh, pretty much do her there. We just gotta mark those out, and then we'll go over and do the other side. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Got our holes marked and drilled for the brake hose bracket. Got our bump stappy put on. Ready to slam this thing on. Well, we got our frame support all buttoned up. Just gotta sneak our little bracket in there. It's gonna be real tight against that bolt, but we'll make it work. Put our lines back in place. Go to the other side, and then on to something else, like 
set and pinion angle or shock extensions or brake lines or drive shaft. How about exhaust? We're gonna have clearance for that. Ooh, might be tight. We might have to suck up that plumber's tape that he's got that thing hanging from a couple of notches. That's why he did that. It's adjustable. Brilliant. Brilliant. So we got our notch in, we got our drive shaft in, we got our brake hose hooked up, breather hose hooked up. We still got a set pinion angle, we'll have to set it on the ground for that. And we're gonna do the shock relocation kit. Yeah, you gonna show them? No? All right, I'll do it. So basically it's just this bracket down here. It utilizes the existing shock holes. And instead of using a bolt all the way through, which is gonna clamp it and pinch it shut, you just use two separate short bolts right here. Clamp it to that. And then on the back side, you gotta drill a 3 ace hole right there so it clamps it there. And then you got a new shorter bolt to bolt it there. And the whole reason we're installing that is so that we can use the stock length shocks. You could get shorter shocks, but then it changes the geometry so that that shock is tipped way up here like so. And it's, I don't know, some optimized angle or something, right Duff? So, we're gonna drill a hole, put some hardware in. Oh man, forgot to put that in there. Son of a biscuit. Oh yeah, we gotta hook up our park brake cable and bleed brakes. And I should check the fluid level in this diff, just cause. Doesn't look like it's been leaking, but it's never been changed, I'm guessing. Also, doesn't look like the rear brakes have ever been serviced, cause it's still got this fancy little clip that holds the drum on. The brakes work fine, so we're not going to address that either. All right, relocation bracket time. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now we just got to do the driver's side. Just like that, bam! Shock extensions installed. Now, park brake. I'm gonna check that diff quick. Oh, there's my oil running out. She's full. Oh boy, get in there. I would have never guessed that. So I crimp this thing back on the end. Now I need to get that back in there somehow. Is that how that goes? I don't remember. Oh, that went through the middle of it. Oh, so let's get that all back up. Slip her through. There. We just gotta get this to slide back together. Oh, it's close. Oh my word. There. Yay! Yay! We got a park break again. Maybe. I mean, it's all hooked up anyway. Good enough for the girls we go with. So now that everything's hooked up, including the park brake. I got the brakes bled. Use my tried and true method of my squeegee. Squeegee? Plunger? Syringe. Way off! Swimmy, swammy, swanson, samsonite. Slappy, swimming, salmon, simmon, swanson, swanson, swanson? Maybe it's on the briefcase. Look on the... Oh yeah! It's right here. Samsonite. I was way off. So reverse bled the brakes 
and the pedal feels good. Right, Duff? Right. Right to the top. Did have to put a new bleeder on that side over there because she was stripped out, but got a nice box of assortment of them from the Amazonia. So we stuck that on. Now I think we can put some wheels and tires on it and get her on the ground and set that pinion angle. So I usually go like, what is it, five-ish degrees. So you're, usually your engine's sitting five degrees down. So I put my diff five degrees up. So equal and opposite, if that's down three degrees, that goes up three degrees. You know the drill, but I got a surprise. We're not putting the Steelys back on. That's right. I got some special wheels. What do we love, Duff? Not Kregers. Not Keystones. It requires new lug nuts as well. You know what I'm talking about. Don't act surprised. Dumbfounded. Lost. All right, I'm going to go grab them because you got no thumbs. That's right, if you guessed torque thrusts, you were right. I'm not a fan of the polished ones, but I like torque thrusts anyway. And these ones were on Facebook Marketplace, semi-local, and they were freaking cheap. Uh, I don't even want to tell you what I paid for them. Anyway, I gotta put the center caps on. Had to buy some lug nuts. 235.70s in the front. Grand slams, white letters in, the only way to do it, and 255.70s in the rear. So I'm going to put these center caps on, I'm going to stick these on there. So these got little countersunk Allen screws. These screws are, look like they're stainless. Either way, we're going to put some anti-seize on there and get it behind our ears and our teeth and in between our toes just like you do every time you get NICs. The reason I like doing that is because you got two dissimilar materials. Dissimilar? Is that a word? And if you see any of these old torque thrusts, I like the dirty mags, the unfinished ones. Usually the lips just polished. There's usually about five or 19 screws snapped off in there and then guys will rotate the cap and drill new holes and snap them off again because the bolts get stuck in there and then they snap off. No good. So we're gonna use some anti seize because that's the right thing to do. Oh, this stuff's gonna be everywhere. Oh, let's get smart. Now there'll be no evidence. Just kidding, they won't be on my hand, it'll be still everywhere else. I don't think we're gonna have enough screws. These things like to come loose and it looks like they're not all there. Do you doctors get better gloves than these? I don't like the way they fit my fingertips. You guys get like fitted gloves? I'm sure there's some doctors watching this right now. All right, I'm gonna go do the other two or three or nine. Just out of curiosity, I wonder when these things were made. Probably took newer tires off than these. Oh, sure enough, 51 of 10. These are almost 11 year old tires. They've been inside. They'll be fine. And anybody who says the torque thrusts are like a Kreger or a Kreger is like a torque thrust. They don't know what they're talking about. Spot them a mile away. And these are way more gooder. All right, so now that we got those center caps on, we're done with the anti -seize. Let's move on to something a little bit more important. Nuts. No, we're not talking about those nuts. I'm not talking about these nuts. Although I do thoroughly enjoy some pistachios. Oh, these ones are even roasted, salted, and not in the shell. Perfect. We're gonna talk about these kind of nuts. The nuts that were on this thing are metric. 14 millimeter to be exact. I think it's M14 by 1.5. And they got this external thread. So you can put this cap on there that holds the center cap. And these are conical 
I believe they call it. No, you know. And we're gonna go with these fancy chrome ones here. Come on, fingers, work for me. These guys right here. Sure enough, M14 by 1.5. They're chrome, conical. Some of these wheels, you know, they got that chamfer there. That means they're meant for conical. Some of them just have a square edge. And for those, you gotta use this guy right here. That's 7 16 that's a GM. Fords and Mopars, I think, are half inch, so three quarter inch wrench on these, 13 16 on Fords. If you're a rat rod guy, you get the bullet on there. Yeah, those are the coolest. And they go with your chain link steering wheel and your shifter outside the car and uh, all that other stuff. Then you got some like these that your center cap or nuts clip on. And then you got the super awesome Kreger styles. So these got a shank that sticks out on them. Uh, extended thread, whatever you want to call them. You can get your super shank and your medium length shank. And along with those, then you got to run these stupid washers. Or smaller stupid washers. Or huge super washers. Or in the case of the infamous, terrible, worst invention ever, the Unilug. And then you get your offsets for your different wheels. Oh look, it's patented. Just like the scotch clip is surely patented. I hate Unilugs. I would rather have Kregers than anything Unilug. So Kreger Unilugs are like the epitome of terrible to me. So we're done talking about your nuts. All the nuts. Let's put these wheels on, finally. Carry on with our life. The more you know about nuts. Also, when you put these new wheels on, you wanna run them for 50 or 100 miles and then retorque them again, cause they like to come loose. And then that really ruins your day. Ruins your wheel and might ruin your life. Always check your wheels, especially new ones. Hey, they don't even rub. How neat is that? Oh, just for you old guys, you know. Like I'm high in the back, a little, little rake to them. That's a lot of rake. I don't think my jack's gonna go high enough to get that down. We should have thought this out better. We'll figure something out. I could just lift it up with a skid steer and Duff could slide the stands out or vice versa, but he's uh, punched out for the night. He just can't get good help. Coming down so smooth we didn't even wake the duff up. The way I want to set pinning angle is at ride height, but I don't want the tires in the way. So I'm gonna figure out how tall this tire is and that'll be, that'll tell me how high I need to set that rear end at and then I can just block it in place, take my measurements, adjust it and suck that hardware up. So this is a 255-70R15. So it's 255 millimeters wide. 25.4 millimeters per inch, so it's just over 10 inches wide, like 10.03 inches wide. And then it's 70 means the aspect ratio of 70, so it's 70% 70 as tall as it is wide, so just over 7 inches. And then it's a 15 inch rim. So if you take 255 divided by 25.4 times 0.7 times 2, because you got sidewall on the bottom, sidewall on the top, plus 15, you get 29. 0.055 inches. So we'll just call it 29 inch tires. So my axle center line has to be at 14 and a half inches so we can block it at that and then adjust it up. Now you know. Now, I mean, I suppose you could have just taken a tape measure and measured the height, but what fun would that be? Everybody likes math, right? Teacher said you'd never use it in life. Here we are. So I'm gonna lower that thing down to 14 and a half inches. And it's not an exact science. We're at 25 inches. So you gotta go down nine and a half inches. Somewhere in there, maybe. We're at 16 and three quarters. Can we leave a stand on the other side? Oh, better take that out. It's gonna be too low. 13 and three eighths. That's right where we need to be. 
So now we gotta get a stand underneath there because we're not crawling underneath it. Well, actually, yeah, we gotta crawl underneath it. It's at the painting angle. And I'm not crawling underneath there without a jack stand. So and we gotta have the weight on the rear end, so we gotta have the jack stands underneath at least the springs. We can have it underneath the rear end, ideally, but springs will be just fine. And I see I forgot to tighten the spring bolt up there, so I'm probably gonna wanna tighten that up too. Double check. 14 and a half. I like it already. So I got this fancy digital protractor because I did some fancy stuff one time and I thought I needed this. But you can just use one of them $10 Harbor Freight ones that dangle around, but I don't like those because they just kind of stick in one spot and you tap it and they move around. But it's uh, close enough for government work. I'm probably gonna have to visit boom tube because the exhaust, we uh, know needs some work anyway. But she's she's pretty close to the diffy right about now. Plenty of room between the bump stops. It's gonna kiss that exhaust first. It kind of hangs low anyway. I'd like to tuck that all up. All right, let's uh, snug this up. Also, my gear wrench took a dump while I was doing that. Awesome. All right, so I played around with it a little bit more. Move the jack further ahead. And look at that, 5.1 degrees. Good enough for government work. So we're gonna suck her tight, call it good. She's tight back here, but I think it'll clear. I had a heck of a time sneaking that jack out on the exhaust. Tires are a little bit low, I'm gonna pump those up, but. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So, it looks a little bit lower in the back. I was contemplating just taking all that trim off. Now I think I kind of like the contrast, so now I might have to find two more pieces of trim. Might have to bring it down a little bit in the front. I don't know. We'll drive it for a bit and see. We gotta fix that exhaust first, adjust it. But yeah, I like it. I know some of you guys are screaming, ah, oh, you ruined that thing. No, not really. Made it so I'm gonna enjoy it. And uh, that's all that matters, right? It's dark out, I'm gonna have a sandwich. And uh, we're gonna take this thing for a drive tomorrow when it's daylight, because not really much to see when it's dark out. What do we got today? You know what? I'm so proud of this moment. You can't get these anymore. Special light sandwiches. You can get hams heavies or ham and cheeses. They're everywhere. So stop commenting that, oh yeah, we got those locally. You don't have the blue ones. You don't have sandwiches. This thing is a collector right now. Mmm. So good. Nothing like lowering your work pickup and ruining it. Enjoying a sandwich. Petting your dog. Just wiped out. What do you think, man? You don't even know how much lower. This thing's gonna be so easy for you to jump into now. Oh, I need a cup holder in here. Right, Duff? What do you think? Pump some tires up. Take this thing for a rip. I still got tune-up kit for it, cap rotor, all that. And power steering seal. But I didn't want to stick that power steering seal in it because if I screwed up that sector, we wouldn't be able to go for a test drive because likely wouldn't have parts by the time we get out of this video. So, still got a lot of stuff to do. One of them is clean up this interior, put a windshield in it, maybe find a dash, see what's underneath this seat cover. Ew. <laughs> that carpet, I think we just burn. But, yeah. This thing is almost as good as this sandwich. It's gonna be a long video, so I appreciate you for sticking in to this point, but we did a lot of work on this thing. We turned some piece of crap that was parked in somebody's yard and basically abandoned into a daily driver that looks pretty freaking sweet. Dust ready to cruise it some more. He already approves. All right, 
calling her for tonight. See you guys in the morning. Oh, poor baby. She ready to call it a night too? Yeah. Yeah. Some belly rubs. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? If you want to know what the inside of a gear inch looks like, that's what it is. I think their quality's kind of went downhill because that's the second 5 16th I've trashed. Although they've been good about warranty them. We'll see what happens this time. Well, new day. Figured we better have some tunes so you can see it kind of rip the cab apart. Got speakers in there and hooked up. And we got the old speakers ripped out back here. Look at how nice that carpet is. If only the rest of it was half that nice. Look at how nice the rockers are. Oh, these southern trucks are the best. Is Oklahoma the south? I don't know. So I got to finish wrapping that up. And we'll take it for a drive. Nothing really to uh, show there. You got to take this back piece out. Of course, it broke all the clips for that. And then you got to take these upright pieces. So this is that cross piece. This is the uprights. And then you got to take the sill plates out too. And the seat belts. And then you got your speaker right there. Our little cheapy four by sixes. And they work. The old ones were blowed out. Nothing. So DJM sends this little measurement sheet with you. Did some measurements forehand. And it looks like we're about 28, 29 inches around at the wheel lip. So I measure from the center of the wheel to the top of the lip. So it looks like we got about a two and a half inch drop in the front and about rear. Five inch, six inch in the back. So in the back, I mean, you're pretty much going to get the height of your axle and the width of your springs because you're using the same spring, so you just flip it on top there. And everyone says, ah, oh, it'll settle. It's really not going to settle because it's the same spring that you always use. In the front, it might settle a little bit. I kind of hope it does because it tucks a little bit of tire back there, but not so much in the front. So, yeah, like I said, getting about six inches, five, six inches in the rear and about... Oh, two and a half to three inches in the front. So I don't know why they call it a 5.7. They must measure off the bumper. Because obviously if you go down two inches there, it's going to be three inches at the bumper. Whatever. I don't know. All right, I'm going to stick this back together. And we're going to go for a test drive. Oh, and I also torqued the uh, lug nuts. I didn't torque them. I just put a half inch cheater bar on them. Breaker bar. And snugged them up good. What are you supposed to torque them to? Like 70? Oh, Duff's is not... 70, 170. We gotta get after it. The masked bandit is uh, headed up to the grocery store for a load already today. Same pajamas, different shirt. I don't remember. Simple Green's really cleaning these panels up good though. Not bad at all. I just need to get rid of that disgusting headliner and carpet. Duff, look at how clean it is back here. We can just start filling it full of crap again. Oh, I wish the rest of the carpet was that nice. Even the plastic cleaned up okay-ish. I didn't put a lot of effort into it. Look at them sill plates. They sure stand out compared to that carpet. Now for the rest of the pickup. We ain't got time for that today though. Go for a ride? Oh yeah. Let's do this. Shouldn't even need any tools. This thing's so good. Load up, let's do this. No, I swear it'll ride just fine being slammed like this. Load up. Good boy. Smells like simple green, doesn't it? It'll be fine. All right, let's do this. Battery dead from you leaving the door open all night? Nope. Let's see if our tunes work. What did you do, bump the mirror? Ugh, the windows don't work. Much better. Yeah, we need to figure out why the windows quit working. I'm guessing it's a bad connection. Oh yeah. Bluetooth radio. A little colder wall. Dig it. Haven't bottomed out yet. 
Oh, I already got the exhaust pipe to hit the rear end. Oh yeah, since this thing's got safety belts. Drive straight. Still gotta get it aligned. Well, I like getting them aligned. It's like 60 or 80 bucks. Cheap insurance. Plus, like I said, they tell you if you got ball joints or tie rod ends and stuff like that. But usually I just have Duff wiggle the steering wheel and I crawl underneath. We forgot to do it this time. Should have had him check. Oh well. So the windows will work. Check fuses maybe. Sometimes if you would jiggle the lock, the windows would start to work. They worked for the first week or two. Even feels faster. Whoa, just cutting through the wind. Speed of cutting through the wind, still got a lot of wind noise. Seals, door seals are on the list. Cruise control, I was gonna go no hands and show you, hey, the cruise works. It does drive pretty straight though. But yeah, the no hands thing doesn't show you that the cruise is working. Cruise cancel works when you hit the brake. Perfect. Alright, let's test her out on the gravel. Drive just as good as it does when it's on asphalt. Anybody who says that you know, ruin these things by lowering them, they live in Podunk, nowhere. All the roads are gravel, pretty much. I'll drive this thing in the field, we'll take her hunt. We'll go fetch enough parts, looking at cars. It's gonna be just fine. And guess what? If you really don't like it and you buy it, all you gotta do is put spindles and coils back in it and put the rear end back on it. Yeah, the notch is still going to be there, but we don't have to worry about that. So I didn't ruin it. This thing is good. 60 mile an hour on gravel. I mean 55 because that's the speed limit. 55, definitely 55. Boom tube just wrapped up the K5 Blazer. You know, the one that the muffler fell off on the test drive. Hot! K5 Blazer, she's a good looking machine. We just gotta get her slammed on the ground, right, Duff? There you go, your worthless knowledge for the day. Oh, where's your seatbelt? That's your, that's your not worthless knowledge. Did you know that Anheuser-Busch purchases 16 millions of corn every year to create Bush Light and Bud Light and all the other beers? Yeah, the more you know. Support your local farmers. So good! I was just to bash the old TBIs for being turds, but this thing's kind of peppy. Then again, I'm used to driving a 4.3 with a water bog on it, so anything's going to be good compared to that. Does she see how she does, 0 to 60? We puked the drive shaft out because I forgot to tighten the U-bolts. Damn, there's 60 right there. This looks good. That's with the old craptastic distributor cap on it that we scratched all the corrosion off of. And spark plug with who knows how many miles on it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Gotta adjust that mirror up. Weird. Can't imagine that's from dropping this thing down five inches in the rear. So yeah, we gotta fix a few things. The windows, the 
exhaust. I really, I think we could just tuck that exhaust up a little bit, but see how that muffler's rotted out. Not really connected. Tailpipes got a hole in it. It's got a crappy hanger on it. Let's just let's just do her up right. And then when we do get a load in the back, because we will, because we're gonna haul stuff with this thing. We don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Good to go. We can get a windshield in it. Let's see if we can find a headliner. They're real money. So are carpets. We want to use this thing, so we don't want to be too nice. They get so that our defroster and vents, that blend door actuator, get that all doctored up. Tighten her up a bit. Put that tune-up kit in it. Plugs, wires, cap, rotor. Oil change? We'll do that. Get the grease circs that are there. I don't know if these things even have grease circs. I don't like the old square bodies where everything's got a zerk on it, that's for sure. Drives pretty good for a couple of hacks. Well, I'm a hack. No, he's just a superstar. So there you have it. We took a 1992 Chevrolet short bed regular cab two wheel drive and we got it roadworthy and we cleaned her up a bunch. Got her slammed down on the ground, got some nice wheels and tires on it. This thing is gonna be a great daily driver. Pretty excited for it. We've got a radio, we got cruise, we got all the amenities. So uh, it just basically shows you what, you know, driving around in the middle of nowhere, knocking on doors, Asking people if they want to sell their junk they got sitting around. Spent a couple afternoons cleaning it up, getting it running, throwing a few new parts at it. We get ourselves a pretty sweet little budget driver, if I don't say so myself. Super clean, OBS. Well, it's rust free anyway. It's got a few dings here and there. Interior's pretty, pretty crody yet, but it's all stuff we can buy and fix. We don't have to do a bunch of fabrication and welding and painting and stuff like that. Yeah excited for it so appreciate it for uh struggling through and watching this up to this point duff and i appreciate you very much go check out my other videos if you haven't uh check out the merch store down below consider being a duff approved member there's some perks that we offer to you guys who are part of that as well but remember it doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you're having fun that thing's pretty fun huh duff yeah it's good i can't wait to get the paint rubbed out a bit Comment down below if you want to see some of that. She's good. I need to fix that bumper too. Straighten her up a bit.